Welcome back to the Britannia Coin Company. We're a coin dealer based in Royal Wotton Bassett in the UK. In today's video, we're going to be giving you some helpful tips when starting a coin collection. Perhaps you found some interesting coins in your change, been given some coins as a gift or inheritance, and you're not quite sure what to do with them. Let's have a start then. Coin collecting can be quite the vast hobby. With thousands of years of coins being minted all over the world, it's hard to know where to start. But don't let this be too daunting to you. Hopefully we'll steer you in a direction to make it easier for you to start. The first bit of key advice I can give you is that knowledge is the key to coin collecting. It's all well and good keeping coins that look nice or that mean something to you, but once you start finding out more about them, you're going to enjoy them even more. So whatever coins you're starting with, the best advice is to learn about what you have. What are they? What are they made of? What are the valuable and rare coins? And what should things cost if you're going to sell or buy them? These resources don't have to cost you a fortune, there are plenty of free databases that you can use. There's the Royal Mint website with its handy mintage figures for the UK coins, Coinoscope, an app which will help you identify coins, Numista, which is free to use, you can catalogue your collection and see other relevant coins. There's YouTube videos like this one, and blogs like the ones we post over on our website. Now it's quite easy to spend a small fortune on resources and books to refer to, but it's probably better that you wait until you decide your niche. It's much better to spend money on resources you're definitely going to use, rather than some books and catalogues which you may not end up using. With the vastness of coin collecting, a focus on one topic could easily develop over time and grow more branches. And at that point, it'd be worth adding to your library or subscriptions over time. Going hand in hand with knowledge, be careful of misinformation as well. Not all misinformation is created maliciously to try and trick you. Again, because coin collecting is such a varied hobby, there's so much information that can be lost in translation. With news articles, you may notice every now and again a headline will hit, claiming something that is at best a bit of a stretch of the truth regarding the value of a coin that you might have. It's worth scrutinizing that because at the end of the day, they're trying to grab yours and non-coin collectors' attention. Do your own independent research before acting on something you have read once. There's also lots of information about errors which are not quite right. They're perpetuated by people who maybe don't have an interest in coin collecting, but if they were to scratch the surface and research a bit more, they'd find out that some of their errors aren't really errors. Something that springs to mind is the age-old text being upside down on the edge inscription of a £2 coin. Now if you take a closer look at some of your coins and compare the lettering around the edge of the coin, Sometimes you'll see the writing positioned one way and on another coin it's the other way and that could excite you if you have no other knowledge than that. What a more experienced coin collector will know is that it's simply the process by which they are made, meaning there's a 50-50 chance of the writing being one way or another. Another interesting variation, which by all means could be a niche to complete a collection itself, but doesn't add value to the coin purely for that reason. So when you see people talking about errors on coins, take it with a pinch of salt and do your own research. One question I see a lot is what coin should I start collecting? It's a really tricky question to answer because there's no one size fits all solution. Generally speaking, I'd suggest finding a topic that you're interested in. Do you want circulating coins that you can readily find in your change? A collection of a certain denomination? a certain theme in the design of the coins, or coins from a certain time period. There may also be a significant year to you which you want to collect. It's worth taking your budget into account as well. It can be very cheap to get your hands on a bulk load of world coins to pick out certain countries or years for a collection, but if you find yourself attracted to something a little bit more expensive, say for instance sovereigns, or other coins at the higher end of coin collecting, you'll need to decide how much you're happy spending with and how frequently you'll be able to add to your collection. There's such a wide breadth of coins that you could start collecting, so my advice is definitely to do your research, have a look around, and see what piques your interest before you start buying. Focusing on a smaller area will be much less daunting for you starting out. 
rather than trying to collect and learn about everything immediately. Collections and focuses of course can evolve and grow over time. I'm sure you'll find a crossover within your own niche to other branches of coin collecting which will keep you going and keep you finding new coins. There are some pitfalls to look out for before you set your mind on a certain collection or theme. It's a great start to maybe set a goal to collect all the coins from a certain denomination to fill a collection. It's definitely worthwhile having a look into it to see if you're going to have any troubles with some low minted or unobtainable coins. For instance in a penny run there's the 1933 penny or if you're collecting different monarchs Edward VIII is a very tricky monarch to get your hands on. Or if you're completing a circulated coin set, there's the Kew Gardens 50p, a very scarce and rather highly priced coin. So be sure to research your theme and figure out what is going to be achievable. Rather than starting and then coming up against an issue part way through, then motivating yourself towards any future progress. Once you get to that point where you've completed everything that's viable immediately in that little collection, there are plenty of other branches to go down. Say for instance you're collecting a run of different monarchs and you get to just the last few you need to add to that collection, you could start collecting coins from your birth year, or collecting coins with animals on. There's plenty for you to be doing whilst you're saving up for that last coin or tracking down a tricky coin to get your hands on. So if you're stuck on a couple of coins that aren't readily found, then where could you buy them from? Before you start buying though, a reminder of my first bit of advice, knowledge. This is going to be crucial to make sure that you're spending the right amount of money on your coins and also will help you identify a really good deal. So there are coin shops like the Britannia Coin Company. You can come in and browse and we're staffed with colleagues who have an interest in coins ourselves. Having made our way into this profession, chances are we like coins too. There are various national coin fairs where lots of coin dealers like ourselves will attend. Instead of going to 10 different shops across 10 different counties, come to a coin fair where we all come together. It's a great opportunity to get to know some of the vendors as well and you can always pick our brains, we're more than happy to help where we can. You can always shop online as well with access across the world to anyone selling coins. This comes with a bit of a warning though, not being able to physically see and handle the coins before your purchase and relying on images on the listings. There are plenty of forgeries out there, we've seen plenty come into our shop. That's a benefit from buying from an experienced and reputable company who will check the quality of the stock before selling it. There's also misleading prices to keep your eyes peeled for. You only have to search for Benjamin Bunnies, the most common commemorative 50p in circulation, to see some extraordinary prices on them. It could be down to just someone chancing their luck, but equally if someone has seen the coin listed for £10,000 and then find the same coin for £100, they could easily think that's a bargain when actually he's only worth 50p. It's not all about buying and selling though, there are plenty of platforms for you to do some trades too. Say for instance someone else has bought a bulk load of coins, has sifted through it and pulled out all the coins that they're interested within their own niche. Equally you may have built up some spares which don't cater to your needs and you can potentially trade with other people. Once you find your preferred shop, dealer or source, they can be invaluable to you, whether it's someone else keeping an eye out for you, if you're after something specific, or just sharing knowledge and advice. So by now you've got yourself some coins, but how do you go about preserving them? You may have hunted high and low for those coins or spent some significant amounts of money on them. It's a fact of life that metal corrodes, it tones, it gets affected by the elements, they can get scratched or dirty. Now unless you can suspend your coins in a vacuum, they will age over time. But there are plenty of ways to preserve the coins that you've lovingly hunted down and spent your hard earned money on. It's important to use your knowledge though to decide the best way to preserve these coins. One of the more cost effective ways is to put them into coin flips, little cardboard cutouts with mylar plastic windows so you can see the reverse and obverse of your coin. After all it's not worth spending £50 to preserve or safeguard your Benjamin Bunny when a coin flip is a fraction of the cost and may be more suitable. On the flip side, why spend thousands of pounds on a specific coin that you need in your collection only for it to be sellotaped into an album? 
It's important to find out what's going to be the most suitable for you. For instance, a PVC coin book is great for holding some coins for the medium term up to five years, but much more than that and it can start damaging your coins. Cardboard folders are great for filling up, but they only display one side of the coin. And if you're collecting something that's ever growing, what do you do with later releases that aren't included? Either way, it's a topic that's worth definitely looking into and potentially playing around with a couple of options. We're going to briefly talk about a bit of a controversial topic now, and that's cleaning coins. It's worth noting firstly, there is a big difference between professionally conserving your coins and cleaning your coins. Cleaning a coin is like abrasively removing the dirt or toning on it, whereas a professional conserver will use time-honored and at times secretive methods in order to preserve a coin for the future. It's the difference between restoring an antique clock to look lovely and function versus scrubbing it with a Brillo pad. We've made a few videos on products you can use to clean your coins, but overall we recommend you don't clean the coins because that will destroy the numismatic value in them. Striking standards is another thing that you're going to need to get a bit of an understanding of. A striking standard is basically the quality that the coin has been created to. We'll go through a few examples now. There are circulated coins which have been struck once at high pressure to produce a quality coin with the intention that it will go into our change. Uncirculated coins again struck once at high pressure to produce a quality coin that's been minted to go into change but it's been kept by a collector or someone else before it's entered circulation. There's brilliant uncirculated, also referred to as BU or bunk. In the UK they're struck twice for a higher quality finish than one that would go out into circulation. It's intended as an entry level collector's piece but they're still mass produced. They're mostly made of base or non-precious metal coins, although there are some examples that do exist of precious metal quality. There's also proof. It's the highest quality example of a coin. They will be struck multiple times, upwards of six times at lower pressure to ensure a higher quality finish to the design. The dyes which have been used to create the design will have been hand finished and polished and cleaned between each strike with each individual coin being inspected and approved. Proof coins could be minted in base metals, silver, gold, platinum and there's PA foot as well which is a coin of precious metal double the thickness of a standard one. There's also bullion coins which are a bit different. They're precious metal coins which are generally bought more as an investment in the quantity of the precious metal. For this reason efficiency of the striking is the emphasis on these coins so it's a bit of a middle ground between the required speed of a circulating coin and having the quality worth the price much like a proof. You will find with a lot of coins that the same design will be released in a range of different standards, allowing you to focus on one specific standard for each design, or to collect all the different standards of the same coin perhaps. We'll briefly touch on coin grading. This is a topic that we need to return to in the future for a more in-depth look at it. In a nutshell, there are agreed levels of quality and conditions to a coin that can be compared to. Although sometimes grading can be a bit subjective, dependent on the person grading the particular coin, but is widely accepted within the hobby. Ranging from grades from MS or PF70, whereby there are no imperfections which have been caused post minting of a coin, leaving it as a perfect specimen example of that coin all the way down to P01, whereby enough detail remains to identify the coin, but much of the detail is lost. Again, as many of the things we've discussed in today's video, it's all about cost and return calculations. Some coins, even in the highest grade, aren't going to have enough value added to it to warrant the cost of doing so. Equally, there could be examples of coins where even a low grade of coin is going to be incredibly valuable, whether it's due to its rarity being more valuable than the condition of it. Once again, it all comes back to knowledge of your own niche in determining whether grading is worth your while for specific examples in your collection. My final bit of advice is almost as important as your own knowledge, and that is communication. I couldn't tell you how many times people have told me that they have found or had a particular coin at one point, thinking nothing of it and have spent it or given it away, not knowing at the time what they had. 
There are plenty of people who will have access and will get coins which may interest you but means nothing to them. And these are people you're going to want in your corner. Whether it's a friend or family member sending you a picture of something interesting they found or come across, the more people you have keeping their eyes and ears out for you, the more you might be able to get your hands on. You then get to be the bearer of good news when someone you know comes across something amazing. This also works in services too, whether it's asking someone at the till if they have any commemorative or picture coins, or asking in the bank if they've had any older coins that no circulate. Even on YouTube, there's a fantastic community of people. So if you have your own niche that you have a question about, leave us a comment and I'm sure there'll be someone that can help you with an answer. I hope this video has been helpful to those of you starting out coin collecting and we have touched briefly on subjects which really need their own video. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them when they get uploaded. We're also on Facebook and Instagram where we post lots of images of our coins and may spark a new interest in your own collecting. We're on Twitter and TikTok. We've got our shop on online store, but I'll see you next time for more amazing coins from the Britannia Coin Company.